The second is that the first position must be necessarily inconsistent with the position the party later takes um, in the proceedings. And then finally, while not an absolute requirement, judicial estoppel will be especially applicable when the party's change of position prejudices a party who had acquiesced in the former position. And so we'll start with the first prong. With respect to the first prong, Your Honor, the state has successfully assumed a position. The state um, took a position in a motion that witnesses should be excluded, and the defense, after the the relief that the state had sought as to five of the nine witnesses that the state was looking to have excluded. So the state was successful. In its motion, the state tries to indicate that um, that in fact, a party must have already had the matter adjudicated by the court in order for there to be a successful position that was taken by the court. I'm going to go for the state's motion. And so what the state says is that is that this must have already been adjudicated by the court in some way through some order by the court. There have been no arguments is what the state says. The state says the record in this case is crystal clear. There were never any hearings or other judicial proceedings in which the state's initial motion to exclude certain defenses was adjudicated by the court. And therefore, um, their position is that that means that there was no, um, that, they, that we don't meet the first prong. However, that's incorrect, Your Honor. And if the court will look at the case that we cited, um, and it's Kuchan, which is a 2024 case, um, the site is 2024 NMCA 032. 